here with Lauren Daigle, and we are talking about her new album, Look Up Child, which I'm so excited about. And it's been a minute since we've had new music from you. Yeah, and a over hot the, minute. A hot minute. Over the past couple of years, you've actually taken a couple hiatuses from performing, from music, from social media. What is something that you learned during that time of just taking a break from everything? Oh, I've learned that rest is one of the most valuable commodities in this industry, but also just as a whole, like for humanity. Rest is so important. And last, not this past Christmas, but the Christmas before, I was at home in Louisiana, and I remember waking up Christmas Day, and I looked at this passage, and it's in um, Proverbs, and it says, even while you sleep, he will provide. And I knew right then, like, okay, I'm supposed to take like a season of rest. I need to take a break. I'd been touring for about three years at that point, just kind of like one tour would roll into the next, would roll into the next, would roll into the next, and it was just go, go, go. And um, I studied the harvest, like how the years of the harvest are broken down, and it's seven years of work, one year of rest on the eighth year. And I traced back, like how long have I been doing music? Like when was the first actual start, like the actual beginning of the pursuit of music. And at that point, it was my eighth year. <laughs> and so, so I was time. like, okay, Lord, I got you, boo. And so I just kind of went into a little season of rest. And it's the best thing ever. Rest is valuable. Get rest at any expense. Just, I, you know, what's funny is I think a lot of times we see the to-do list and we're like, I can't rest until the to-do list is done. Right. And I, there's moments where I I talk to my team about like actually going into the to-do list from a place of rest. Yeah. Like that's what I've learned in this past season of health, like what it is to be healthy. For me, this isn't for everybody, but for me, it's like let me get rejuvenated, rested, replenished, and then go into all the things that need to be done. Well, then you could do it with excellence. And I, right. I, I think something we forget oftentimes is, I mean, God, the mm -hmm. creator of the universe, mm -hmm. in that process, took a day of rest. Yeah. And for some reason, we think, okay, we can go a mile a minute. We can yeah. keep churning things out, and yes. it's going to be great. And it's not. And yep. so I love that you took this season, but I'm also really glad that you came back <laughs> with some new music. Uh, so your, the album's called Look Up Child. One of the songs is called Look Up Child. And I was listening to some of the behind the scenes about this song, and it's not just from a perspective of being a child of God, but you have like a full childlike perspective mm -hmm. with this as well. Yes, absolutely. I In that season of where everything was going a million miles a minute and I was kind of like, what is going on? Like, I need to just calm down from everything that's happening. It was amazing. I'm 100% grateful. But there are moments where you're like, okay, where am I? Where, where have things gone? Like, let's settle down. And I was talking with a friend, Bob Goff. He oh, wrote yeah. this book, Love Does. Yes. I read that book while I was taking my break. Changed my life. Get the book, Love Does, Bob Goff. I just finished reading it, and oh uh, I'm like five years behind on the trend, oh. but it's so good. It's anyway. so good. Have you started Everybody Always? Not yet, yet. Okay. that's next on the list. That's the one that's that I'm like, it's in my bag every single time I travel, but I haven't made much progress on it. <laughs> so it's like, okay. Um, anyway, so I read that book, and I was talking with him, um, I guess about a year and a half ago. And he said, oh, Lauren, you just need to remember your childlike self again. And I said, what do you mean? Like, he said, when you walk into these business meetings, when you walk in to any moment that you get uncomfortable or that you take on too serious, just remember your childlike self. And I said, okay. He said, how would the eight-year-old version of yourself hmm. see the situation? What kind of eyes would they be looking through? And that's what you need to apply to every area of your life because we are all called to walk in childlike faith, mm -hmm. to have that childlike joy, that childlike zeal. You know, the ones who Jesus said, come unto me, come on, all the children. He would just pile up the children around him, you know? And I said, okay, I want it. And he said, you need to take Mr. Potato Head everywhere you go. <laughs> and he, I was like, okay. He's like, no, really, just to remind yourself, like take a Mr. Potato Head 
everywhere you go. So I, in my purse in there, I have like a Mr. Potato Head ear. Do you seriously? (laughs) Yeah. That's amazing. Just to keep like the zeal and the understanding of how joyful we can be. Yeah. And um, I really wanted things to be light natured, you know, and especially with that song, Look Up Child, it's like got this kind Mm -hmm, of, mm -hmm. I went to Tulum and traveled for a little while and it was a short trip, but it had such an impact on me. And while I was there, they played a lot of like reggae kind of music, beach vibes. And I came back and we wrote Look Up Child and my producer was like, this song is like totally reggae. Yeah. (laughs) I was like, okay. And so we just had, it was so much fun, but I wanted that lighthearted nature in the song. Right. If we were when we first heard this song, my first comment was it sounds like it belongs on like the Lion King soundtrack. Oh, like that's just a nice awesome. little groove yes. is like, you yes. know, Simba's getting his footing in life yes. a little bit, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you talk about this childlike sense of approaching things. What does a day in the life look like for eight year old Lauren? Like if eight year old oh. Lauren made every decision, what you ate, what you wore, what would yes. that look like? Okay, eight year old Lauren. Mm-hmm. I was obsessed with clothes, so I would change clothes like four or five times a okay. day. My mom would be like, I can't wash this many clothes. You've got to just simmer down, Lauren. And I would just, like, I would start off the day wearing my pajamas, obviously. And then I would start, I would go into my room, pick out what I was going to wear for school, wear that, get home from school, change into my play clothes, <laughs> leave the play clothes behind, then go back into the PJs. I was like all about just like, oh, what outfit can I design today? What, what, right what can I put? Yes. Yeah. And if it was winter, I was 100% like, I thought wearing shorts with big sweatshirts was the coolest thing. <laughs> or like plaid button downs with shorts. I thought was so cool. So I would actually, in, in the school that I went to um, when I got older, like we had to wear uniforms. Mm-hmm. So it was, plaid shorts buttoned down with like a tie. And I remember we the only option of pants we had were these like hideous like khakis that were straight leg and like very awkward, not comfortable. So I would freeze all day long because I was like, I'm not wearing the khakis, I gotta wear the plaid. I have to (laughs) still have a look, even though it's freezing outside. Like didn't make any sense at all. But Like that, it didn't have to make sense. Right. It didn't have to. Like that's the thing about being a child. And I loved ice cream and I would eat ice cream all the time and I would play outside. And I remember we had these vines in our tree outside in the backyard. And I wanted to be Jane and Tarzan. Like I loved climbing things. I was constantly climbing. And thought for sure this vine will hold me. Oh yeah, totally. It's gonna work and I'm gonna swing across from tree to tree. Well, I did. A lot. Like, I would climb up, and these vines were suspended in the air, and I would jump in the air from one vine to the other and, like, grab a hold of it and then swing on that one. Oh, my gosh. Like, midair. Crazy. Like, I look back, and I'm like, okay. Well, I would bring friends up there, and this one friend I had, I said, come on, you can do it. It's fine. And she got afraid when she was up there. And I was like, no, all you have to do is just literally like this, like, jump to this vine. Midair, like, hanging and she missed the vine when she went to reach and landed. And she just grabbed her wrist and she's like, that hurt, and like ran home. And I was like, well, that's interesting. I guess she left for today. (laughs) I'm not thinking anything of it. I'll keep swinging on the vines. Next day she comes in with a cast. Oh my gosh. Broke her wrist. Yeah. So I was adventurous as yeah, an eight-year-old. Adventurous, maybe not the best life advice, <laughs> you know, but you know, you know, it's fine. It's you can fine. do it. No, that's awesome though. And I think that there's lessons to be learned. Maybe not, you know, the swinging <laughs> on the vines as yeah. adults necessarily, but just living that carefree nature mm-hmm. of that childlike faith yes. that God intended it to yes. be for us for totally. sure. Totally. Let the heavy things. My producer has this saying where uh, he'll say, oh, it's like water rolling off the duck's back. It's like water on a duck's back. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the thing about the heavy things in life is how I'm in this pursuit of learning. How do I make the heavy things just water on a duck's back? Right. Where they just roll off. They don't impact me um, negatively or become stressful or all-consuming. They just roll like water off the duck's back. Yeah. Because we know where our trust lies. Yeah. We know what our faith is in. And that's the thing that dictates our um, ability to stand strong in those times. Yeah. Uh, there's one song that 
I'm uh, really curious about on your new album called Losing My Religion. Now, is oh, this yeah. like an REM cover or? Oh. No. What, so what's the story but behind this? Because the title itself, like, I think would make some people go, wait, what's that what? all about? What's yeah. happening? I'm not going crazy, everybody. <laughs> just calm down. No, I'm kidding. It's honestly, I was uh, sitting with my producers, Jason Ingram and Paul Mabry, and I walked into the room, and Jason had this idea, like, on the piano, and he's like, I just have this chorus. And we changed the melody of the chorus, like, with time, but as he was singing it, He's like, I'm losing my religion. Or that's the new melody, but his was like, I'm losing my religion. And I was like, that's kind of compelling. This is interesting and kind of terrifying all at the same time. What does this mean? And I started thinking about someone that I had just met that week who um, was involved in this church they were like a prominent figure in the church and had an affair. And it wasn't a good situation at all. And there wasn't remorse necessarily there. It was just kind of a hard pill to swallow right, in life bad. in general, right? And I thought about what, what is the heart of God for people that fail? What is the heart of God for people that make mistakes? And I'm someone that's like bent on perfectionism. And you wouldn't know that because I'm I am like as go with the flow like free spirited as possible. <laughs> 18 bracelets yeah, on. Come on now. But yeah, totally. But I put a lot of pressure on myself. Yeah. I put a lot of weight on myself. And I've seen me bring that into my relationship with God where it's like I've got to check this box for him to be pleased. I've got to check this box for me to fit in culturally with like society. And what they say is good and what they say is right. And I've got to check this box. And this song is the removal of all of those boxes. Mm -hmm. It's the removal of the facade that Christianity is clean and perfect and squeaky and great. And I think a lot of times there's messes that people get themselves into. There's a lot of hurt that people get themselves into and a lot of hurting others that people get themselves into. And it can be with the best intentions. It could be with the worst intentions. But where is grace in that? Mm -hmm. And where is sovereignty in that? And where is God like looking at the thief on the cross saying, no, you'll be with me in paradise. I know that you believe. I know you believe. Well, we would look at the thief and be like, he stole. What is wrong with him? Da -da -da. And it's, it's, the song for me is about losing the accusation. Right. It's losing the box of religion. It's stepping much further into relationship. It's being connected to a source, being connected to Jesus, saying like, this is how he sees humanity. He knows our form. I read that this morning in, in uh, Psalms about him knowing our form. He knows our human nature and knows exactly how to approach that. And we might not have all the answers, but I want to get as close to how he sees it as possible. So that's what this song is all about. Awesome. Yeah. So you have the song, You Say. So we're going to play a fun little game called okay. Who like Say. The game. Yes. Who Say. Who Say. Who They Say They're Going to Beat Them Saints. Who Something say? like that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you have two really distinct titles that uh, I feel like a lot of people have given you. Maybe you want to give yourself. But you okay. are both a powerhouse singer. Oh, my. And oh, a powerhouse that? preacher. Oh. With your music and your okay. words and your message. So I'm going to give you some quotes from some famous powerhouse singers okay. and some famous powerhouse preachers, and you just have to say which one you think is which. Okay, okay. You good with that? Okay. Just a few of these. <laughs> you ready? I like games, yeah. Okay. What's in your soul is in your soul. Who do you think said that? Mm, singer okay. or preacher? I would say singer. Singers, correct! That was Miss Whitney Houston Okay, said that. Yes. I was like, it's gonna be one of the greats. Mm -hmm. I could tell. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say Whitney or Aretha. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, how about this one? When God loves you, what can be better than that? Oh, I would say preacher. Preacher. No, hey, it's singer. singer. Was it Bono? One. Aretha Franklin. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. I didn't get that right, but it's fine. If you're alive, there's a purpose for your life. Okay, I'll say preacher for that. Preacher is correct. Okay. Yes, that's Rick yes. Warren. Good okay. job. Very good. When I have nothing to say, I'd rather just not talk. Ooh. I'm going to say preacher on that one. Preacher. Have I'll be ever... honest. Everything in me says singer, but be, I'm 
Now I'm going way psychoanalytical. <laughs> and I'm thinking, wait, they didn't say sing. They said talk. Mm, preachers They did talk. say talk. Is but that preachers give never stop talking. Okay, so it's singer. It's singer. It's yes, singer. that's Adele. Okay. Yes. Ah, okay. I love it. Next, you don't have to know everything about the mountain in front of you to take the next step. Mm, that's Preacher. Preacher, yes. Yeah. Louis Giglio. Yes. Good job. Uh, everything that I decide to do means something. Otherwise, I don't do them. That singer. That singer <laughs> that's is, such a singer mentality. That's very much a singer <laughs> attitude. That's Celine Dion. Oh, wow. And then last one. Some things don't need to be cut back. They need to be cut off. Oh, that's Preacher. Preacher. That's yeah. Miss Beth Moore. Yes. Yes. Come on. Congratulations. Okay. You got most of those. I that's need really this. I need to like walk around with that with sheet. Those <laughs> Come on, Adele. What you saying? Come on, Whitney. What you saying? <laughs> Come on, Aretha. Preach. Let's go, girl.